This song is forever yours. A thousand hallelujahs, a thousand more. Amen. top of our voices, in our hearts believe it, but with our words say it, that in our darkest day, God doesn't stop and God doesn't end and he does, he's always there and he never gives up. Can we say that together? 
thankful that Jesus never gives up on you? Yeah, yeah, me too. Are you thankful that Jesus never gives up on you? Yeah. Hey, kiddos, look around the room for a second, and you'll see moms and dads, aunts and uncles, friends of a bunch of people that God never gave up on, and that's true for you as well. And our hope today on this All In Sunday where families are together, uh, from the youngest to the oldest part of our church family in the same space, our hope is that each one of us encounters the love of God in a new and a fresh way. The love of the Father, the friendship of Jesus, and the power and the presence of the Spirit spirit. So as we get going, here's where we're heading. I have a quick word for us today. A few minutes to the church family, then we're kicking it old school. Like we're going to invite the, I'm going to invite the kids to come sit. We're going to go like the old school, like kids moment in the service and then a challenging word to the rest of us. So before we do that, why don't you high five someone again, have a seat and have a seat for a moment. Beautiful. It's good. Thank you. Hey, before we jump into today's kind of abbreviated teaching and our kids moment, I want to champion one thing that we're going to be focusing on for the next month or so. And the heart of this is developing a more robust way for you and I to be connected to each other so that we can care for one another. We can live in community. We, all, we know that all of the stuff of God happens in community, it happens through friendship. It happens through relationship. So we, want to, we are leaning into a season of doing the pragmatic so we can get after the stuff of the future, which is connecting people to Jesus, being connected to one another, and providing spaces where just the virtue of our relationship help encourages another person that don't give up because I was tempted to give up once and I didn't, and God has been really good through that. So how we're doing that is through our digital directory, and Katie has a table set up in the lobby. You can stop by. You can also, this is permission. Scan this QR code now, start filling out the info, and what's going to happen is this is going to help us create a way to be in community, to care for one another, and to catalyze um, movement of things and response to needs that are happening around us. So we'll be focusing on this, continue to uh, help us out with that. Now, here's where we're going. You ready? We've got a quick word to the church, and then we're going to have a kid's moment, and then we're going to get out of here on a challenging thing. I'm kicking it like days of, you, of kids pastors, so this is kind of fun for me. Kids, are you ready? Beautiful. I love it. Now, I want everyone to take a moment. It's vacation season. You've been on some road trips. You're going on a road trip. Those can go well, or those can be really, really not so fun, right? I want everyone to imagine with me, you are in traffic. You are sitting in traffic. Ooh, just think about the stress that comes with that. If you're a parent with kids, picture your kids in that car. And they've got to go to the bathroom. And you've just run out of goldfish. 
and there is no room to pull over and you are stuck. Can you picture it? Can you picture the sweaty knees touching one another in the back seat, the old school bench seats? Anybody been there with the sweaty knees? And it is the worst thing everywhere. But all of a sudden, you're stuck in traffic. And yes, this is the scene from Bruce Almighty. And all of a sudden, a lane opens up. A lane opens up. Would you take it? Would you take it? Yeah, yeah, you would. Of course you would. Who wouldn't take the lane that has opened up? And to the, to the church family for a moment, let's talk about our kids in front of them. Right now, our kids and our students are navigating a world that is as complicated and filled with traffic as it's ever been. Let me put it this way. If our kids' and students' journeys into adulthood and apprenticeship with Jesus was like that of an interstate, it wouldn't have one lane of things that they're navigating. It wouldn't have two lanes. It wouldn't have three lanes. There would be lane upon lane upon lane of things that they are trying to make sense of. They are trying to navigate. And there is traffic and obstacles and barriers and ideas and feelings and experiences and choices and information coming at them and in them and through them in a ways that are hard for us to fathom. And let me tell you, church, it's not just a big interstate. It is rush hour for our kids. And so let me ask you, if you could open up a lane for them in their journey into adulthood and apprenticeship with Jesus, would you? Yeah, yeah, this is, this is as interactive we are going to answer today. If you could help them navigate it, would you? If you could help show them a way and teach them a pathway, if you could model a way that even says what we just sang about, when I was tempted to give up, I didn't, and Jesus met me there. I think the consensus would be, of course you would. Who wouldn't open that lane for our kids and our students? And one of the most complicated lanes that they are navigating right now is the lane of their feelings, especially worry. Everybody say, worry. Worry. Church fam, you already know this, but just to remind you, statistically speaking, Gen Z and younger is the most anxious generation of all the generations alive today. From all the data that's out there, it is massive. The impact is massive. The experience is hard, and the underlying reasons are many. And here's our bottom line as Bridge Church. Why we lean into Sundays where we're all in together and we create space to speak to the whole of our church family is this. That if we are going to love and to reach the next generation well, if we're going to create space and safety of relationships in our kids' journeys into adulthood and to apprenticeship with Jesus. If we are going to build bridges instead of barriers... We must meet our kids where they are and as they are. And right now, right at the leading edge of who they are, for many, is the wrestling match that they have with their emotions, especially worry. Parents, adults, we are not immune. We worry. We are anxious people. And it is compounding the younger you get. So let's talk about that today. Let's talk about that today. And I want to go a bit old school, and this is the moment we're going to segue into the kids moment. So if you are a kiddo, I'm going to ask you to be so bold. Parents, you can come with them. Would you guys come and just sit like right along the front, crisscross applesauce or something, right up in this space, and it's going to get like facing me, guys. Wrong, yeah, yeah, down there. Unless you have a word. Do you have a word? I'm just kidding. They got a word, all right. I got some words. What's up, guys? So we're going to talk about a feeling that a lot of us have, and it's called worry, called worry. But before we do that, we're going to play a little game. This is for everyone involved, but especially you guys, get some screams out. And what we're going to do is I'm going to show an emoji on the screen, and I want to see if you guys can guess which feeling this emotion is telling us. Are you ready to look? You don't have to raise hands. You just scream it. This is your chance. All right? First one. Ready, set, go. What is this? Beautiful. Angry. How many of you felt angry at someone recently? Yeah, yeah, I get it. Number two. Let's go to the next one. Sad. Beautiful. What's, here's the next one. This one might be more tricky. 
Scared. Scared. That's what we were going for. I love it. We have two more. The fourth one. Ready, set, go. What do we see? Happy. And here's the fifth one. Worried. See, that was a good pedagogical tool to lead you into the subject area to end on the emoji of our subject. Worried. Sorry. Kids. Hey, guys. Do you ever feel worried? Let me tell you an embarrassing story about myself. Okay? When I was in the third grade, any third graders? Anyone going into third grade? Okay. When I was in third grade, my classroom at TVCS was in the room that our preschool is in upstairs on Sundays. Um, and the Hera House used to sit on, over on the hill over here. And most of our weather and storms would come up over the cemetery that's behind the church where the AEP thing would. And my classroom windows faced that area. And I don't know why, but I was really, really scared of storms. Thunderstorms, lightning. I thought every time a cloud in the sky, there's going to be a tornado, and it was going to be bad, and it was scary. I was, I was worried constantly. It used to be so bad that my third grade teacher would have to call my dad, who worked at my school, and he'd have to come and get me because I would be hiding in the bathroom scared and worried at the sight of every single storm cloud. Are you making fun of me right now? All right, how do you think that makes me feel? <laughs> Angry, no. <laughs> I used to be very worried. Now I'm worried about my own feelings in front of you, but I used to be super worried. And I wanna tell you something, worry is normal. Worry is very, very normal. But worry, when it gets to the point that like any of you ever felt sick to your stomach because you're so worried? Yeah, have you ever puked because you got so worried? Anyone ever felt like, I really don't want to do anything, or i got to hide in the bathroom? It's normal. But when we get to the point that we can't do that, then I think God would want to help us. And so I want to ask Mr. Boone here. He's going to hand me a, a backpack here. Thank you. Thank you. Now, how many of you guys carry, do you guys still carry a backpack to school? Okay. What are some of the things that go in your backpack every week? Yeah. Water. iPad. Ooh, bougie. Yeah. <laughs> Do what? Water bottle. I love it. Folders. Notebooks. Lunchbox. Binders. What? Brushes. Brushes. Yeah. Epipens. Epipens. <laughs> Bless. <laughs> Bless. Worry, EpiPen. Yeah, yeah. iPhones. I, is that right? Headphones, sorry. Headphones, yes. All right, two more. Water. Water bottles. Thirsty. This is a thirsty group going to school. Now, I brought my own school back today, school backpack today, and um, this is a big one. And in it are some things that we're going to pull out one by one, and by guess, you might have an idea of some things that are, that are in here. And actually, I need a volunteer for the next month. Come on, come on, come on, yes. All right, could you make our friend feel very, very welcome? You can use the stairs or climb, I love it. All right, try to pick that up. Pick it up for a minute. Kind of heavy? Do you think you can put it on? You think so? Oh, did we sign a liability release? I'm just kidding. Beautiful. Okay. So in this backpack is a lot of things. Now, I have a qu I'm going to start pulling some stuff out of this backpack. I want you guys to tell me whether or not you think this is, like, helpful for school. All right? Number one, tennis racket. This is my childhood tennis racket. Anyways, not really helpful at school, right? Um, what about a, anybody doing, doing some cooking? A walk dish? No. No, no, that's not real helpful. Oh, this might be helpful. Anybody? No. This, this is my grandpa's car, union carbide hat. All right, what else do we have in here? Ooh, like a 10 pound uh, cowbell? No, no, no. Not. I hope our stage, John. <laughs> All right. 
No, not helpful. Believe it or not, I know how to use that on easy projects. Um, that's about it. So I have, I have a question. So we've emptied the backpack, right? Can you, can you confirm there's nothing left in there? Yes. You can confirm? Yes. Beautiful. Is it like way lighter than it used to be? Yes. Okay. So let's think about this for a second. I, want, I need you to stay up here for a sec. Okay. Can you step, just step to the side for a moment? I want us to think about this backpack for something like worry. All right. Can you hold it out in front of everybody? I want you to think about it. Was any of this helpful for a normal day at school? Yes. Was it really heavy or was it really light? Really, heavy. really, really heavy. See, worry is one of those things that's normal to feel, but when we don't know what to do with it, it becomes like a bag filled with heavy things that makes life way, way harder. There's a verse in the Bible from Proverbs that says this, and it says that worry weighs a person down, and the second part says, but an encouraging word cheers a person up. Worry weighs people down, but an encouraging word cheers people up. So we had a backpack that was really heavy, and we, we made that like worry, and worry weighs us down. It's no fun, right? So now your backpack's empty, but do you still have any supplies for school? Still just have an empty backpack. So it's good to get rid of our worry, right? We're glad the worry's gone. But we still need some stuff in this bag, right? Now, what if I were to tell you that all along there was a hidden compartment in that bag? Did you see it? Beautiful. So on the bottom, right there, was a compartment. See, will you open that up for us? Huh. What do we have in there? Oh, we have some paper. We have a pencil box. We have some crayons, and that's all, but go with me that there's every other school supply you could ever need, hope, or imagine, including iPads, you bougie kids. Um, so, all along, you had what you needed, right? But there was something that had your attention that was weighing you down, right? The 10 pound weight, the drill, the walk, the, all the things. So what if those of us who live with a friendship with Jesus already have what we need to help us deal with our feelings just like worry? What if one of the best ways that you can deal with your worry so that it's not like me who has to call his dad to get me out of the bathroom when there's a storm cloud in the sky is to ask Jesus to help us with our worry and he actually does it and he gives us what we need so the question after that is this was cool taking stuff out of the backpack right mm -hmm. it went from heavy to light right yes but is it that easy to get rid of our worry see the pause is the answer <laughs> not real sure right so what is something we can do to help us with our worry? That's the question, all right? And to do that, we're going to do it together. So I'm going to ask the kiddos to head back to their parents for a moment. Can you guys give them a round of applause for how great they were up front? Great job. As they go... So how do we deal with our worry? And this is where there's something I, I want to speak to everyone for just a minute. How do we deal with the heavy load that is life, that is the worry? So there's a guy that was a friend of Jesus, and his name was Peter. And Peter was a guy that lived life with him. He was a great friend, but he made some mistakes, and he felt like giving up. He did things that he didn't want to do. And Jesus loved him anyways and he learned how to deal with the worries one of the worries he had was the fact that he ghosted he betrayed he snitched he was bad to his friend Jesus yet something happened in Jesus and Peter's friendship 
that set him free from the baggage and the weight of his worry. And he later went on to write this idea. And he says this, cast your worries on Jesus because he cares for you. Cast your cares on Jesus because he cares for you. What does it mean to cast? Like to throw, to give, to hand away your worries to Jesus because he cares for you. And so before we kind of close out today, I want us all to do something together. And I'm going to ask you guys to stand. Go ahead and stand. Every single one of us. And if you're a mom or a dad or aunt, uncle, grandma, grandpa with a kid today, um, I want you to do this with them. I want you to engage the moment. And I'll give you a practice, an actual thing you can do that Peter encourages us to do when we have a lot of worry. It's not so easy to get rid of our worry, but there are ways in which that Jesus helps us. And so this is what I want you to do. I want everybody to kind of close your eyes for a moment. When you close your eyes for a moment, take a few breaths. Take a few breaths. I want you to think about one thing today that you came in worried about. Just one thing. One thing that you came in worried about. Do you, you have a picture of it maybe in your brain, your, heart, your head? And I want you to do something really bold and creative. I want you to picture Jesus standing in front of you. And he's making eye contact with you. And maybe he's holding like a big, big backpack. Big enough, strong enough to carry every worry that you have and every worry your mom and dad have and every worry that's in this room. And I want you to say to Jesus, I want you to say, Jesus, can everybody say it? Jesus, take my worries and show me that you're with me. Let's try again. Jesus, take my worries and show me you're with me. And show me you're with me. Worry is very real, guys. You can open your eyes. Worry is very real. We know all the stats. We know how difficult it is. We know the, the difficulties with anxiety and the things that are, are really hitting on our generation, our kids, and our students. And I wanna, I wanna close with this, this thought. Kids and parents especially, have you all ever kind of had those battles back and forth about how clean your bedroom is? Or about a playroom? Any, yeah, anybody, anybody been, let's not say yelled at, but let's say, has anyone had like a strong conversation with mom and dad recently about the cleanliness of your room? Yeah. Moms and dads, whether this is a recent thing or a thing from years ago, do you remember the battle that is the cleanliness of their bedroom or the playroom? Yes, I bet you do. I want, to imagine, I want you to imagine with me a scenario in which not you guys would be fighting about it. Ooh, speaking of anxiety, that just... I want you to picture you and your kid are fighting over and over about the cleanliness of their room. You're frustrated, they're frustrated. You're overwhelmed, they're overwhelmed. And you're both at this weird impasse. And it feels like it's a power thing. It's disrespectful, they're not listening, all the things. But one day you realize something. You realize that there's a step you can take that may help end this battle over the way the room looks. And what you do is you go to Home Depot and you go to the closet organizing aisle and you buy something to organize your closets and the room and cubicles and the bins and you rush home and you set it up and then you invite your kid to clean their room only this time there's a place for everything to go. Not only do you tell them where to go, you get down hands and knees and you begin to pick up things one by one and you show them where it goes. And all of a sudden, you have given order and meaning to the chaos. And you got down in the mess and you showed them how to clean and organize it and something unlocked. 
Because all of a sudden you weren't fighting about how dirty it was, you were working together to clean it up, to make sense of the mess. And I want to say this to everyone in the room today that cares about kids, and this is so deep in our hearts, is that when it comes to your kids and our kids' journey into adulthood and relationship with Jesus, something they need help in making sense of is their feelings, especially worry. Who bailed me out of my worry in third grade hiding in a bathroom? My dad did. We have to make, help our kids make sense of it. And we want to, as a church, help end the spiral that is emotions and worry and anxiety and reset reality for our kids. How? We provide relationships that bring order to the chaos. We don't yell at them for their feelings. We don't judge why their feelings are coming out that way. We get down in the dirt with them. We help pick up the pieces and give meaning to the chaos. We get belonging to everything that they have. And then we say to them, there is no mess that you could create anyways that would end our relationship. There is no mess you could create that is too far gone that we would have an issue. We bring order to the chaos. And as a church, guys, we got to do that together. There's an invitation in front of us to do that together. And it's beautiful to come here and to drop our kiddos off and to trust it to our team and our kids' team, and and that's great. But let me tell you something. There is something far more powerful than dropping our kids off to other friends, and it is getting down in the mess with our kids. It is becoming not just a consumer of what we offer on Sundays, but contributing to the future that is helping our kids navigate the multi-laying interstate of development and adulthood and apprenticeship with Jesus. We get the chance. Listen, we get the chance to get in the game with our kids. We get in the chance. We are right now. We have the opportunity. Look around. This isn't all of them. We have the chance to make a lasting impact on an entire generation that can end cycles of family stuff, that can bring order to their chaos, that can bring hope to hopelessness, that can give them love when they've been searching for it, that can give them a safe place to ask the questions that they're asking that you all didn't have to ask until later. Will you partner with us in that? Can you partner with us in that? If we are going to form and be part of these kids and these students' journeys, we got to give them a place to belong so that they can belong to Jesus, to themselves, and to others. Will you help us partner by helping them believe in Jesus and his way and to do that relationally? And we want to partner together by helping our kids become like Jesus for the sake of others. Let's create the church family we want together. Let's create it together. Let's create it together. Let's create it together. And if that's what you want, let's be like the world's most amazing, forgiving, patient room closet organizers. Bringing, yes please, bringing order to chaos. And so one of the ways that we want to partner with you is we actually have a free resource for the first however many parents can get there fast enough to take what's left, is we have a book that's called Beyond the Spiral. And this is a little bit aimed more towards upper elementary, middle school, high school, but it's a book that you as parents and family or student leaders or teachers or people that just are curious about the next gen can walk through that provides research and practices to help our kids navigate the journey that is their feelings, especially worry and anxiety. So take one with you today. If we run out, let us know. We'll get some more or jump on Amazon and grab one as well. And so I'm going to pray us out. And I just want to end with this idea. There's a difference between, I want you to picture, I want you to picture water flowing for a second. Just picture water flowing. Everyone imagine water flowing. Okay? And in your hands, you can either pick up a pipe or you can pick up a pail, like a bucket. Okay? A pipe or a pail. Pail being a P word, alliterative for bucket. All right? You got a pipe or a bucket. The future of our church is based on us becoming not buckets that come and hoard the resource of the water and meeting our kids. The future of our church is built on becoming a pipe that is like a conduit, a channel by which what comes to us flows through us and out of us. 
Please, when it comes to our kids and their feelings, let's not become buckets that hoard up what we need and consume and consume and consume. Let's become pipes that are conduits to all the things that God has on our hearts for us and for our kids. And we have ways to do that. Let's be in this together and let me pray. Jesus, help us get beyond the spiral that is anxiety and worry. Jesus, for every kid in this room, every family in this room, would you help them? Would you help them to sense that when worry is so heavy, that maybe the first step is just to ask Jesus to be with us, to rid us of our worry, to bring, to, to put, picture Jesus standing in front, of us, in front of us, asking us what we need and us handing it over. Jesus, would be, we be a church that gives such a safe, loving, relational space to our kids and our students that it's something that they lean into, that it's sticky, Jesus, that helps us point them to you. Would you help us to get be like a true family where everyone gets their hands dirty, where everyone has a role to play, where you help us to make the shift between becoming buckets that are consuming and hoarding good resources to a pipe that is like a conduit, a channel of your love and your belonging and your relationship, giving it away for the sake of others. Jesus, pray, I pray that each one of us that we would know the love of the Father, the friendship of Jesus, and the power and presence of your Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, amen. amen and amen. The resource is available on the table straight out there. Also, the QR code, digital directory. Please, please, please jump in on this so we can be a family together. Have an amazing rest of your week.